Hello, my name is Bonnie Stipe, and today I will be giving a teaching demonstration on the painting technique of grisaille underpainting. This is one type of underpainting technique that I show in a Painting 1 course. By this point in the semester, the student has already had prior knowledge of color theory and paint mixing. The word grisaille, from the French word for gray, is a term for a painting executed entirely in monochrome or near monochrome, usually in shades of gray. A grisaille painting may be executed for its own sake, or for what is known as an underpainting. An underpainting is an initial layer of paint applied to a ground, which serves as a base for subsequent layers of paint. An underpainting also helps to make an oil painting look richer, enhancing the colors placed over top. Some methods, like the grisaille method, date back to the Renaissance and the invention of oil paint. This work is a grisaille study for the painting The Grand Odalisque. Through this example, you can see one of the main functions of underpainting, figuring out compositional issues and solidifying a value range. As you can see from the final painting, the artist has made a few changes from his original study. Perhaps he has worked out these issues through his underpainting. Beginning in the 15th century, grisaille has been a technique used to train and enhance artist skills. Today as a class, we will use this method as an underpainting for a still life. First, using only black and white, we will map out the value of the still life. Then, using glazing techniques, we will build the painting into full color, just as the old masters once did. We will begin by setting up a still life with a singular light source. Simple objects with a variety of surface textures will work well for this project. You will also need to have prepared a canvas with gesso in order to start. Additional supplies include gamsel, linseed oil, gloves, oil paint, rags, a palette knife, and a glass palette. You may now begin setting up your underdrawing. It is extremely important to have a solid underdrawing for your painting. Be sure to use site measuring, checking each one of your measurements before you begin. Remember to compare heights, widths, axis points, angles, and negative spaces on your still life. Your underdrawing does not have to be in full value, but you should have all areas of value mapped out before you begin painting. Remember, before you get out the oil paint, to put on gloves and make sure you have good ventilation. We try to use the most non-toxic of materials, but striving to have the least exposure to chemicals is important for any safe studio practice. The next step in creating a grisaille underpainting is mixing a palette. Using only black and white paint, this underpainting will be monochromatic, or consisting of one color plus tints and shades. Your palette should have a wide range of value. You should try to fill the entire palette with paint for you to work from. Mixing a palette before you start benefits you in two ways. One, you will be able to work more fluidly and quickly, already having a base to start from. And two, you're simplifying the puzzle for your painting. As you work, you can compare the value to your palette and attempt to match the closest color to your still life. As you begin to work, it is important to start off with low viscosity paint or paint that can move more fluidly. During this first layer of our painting, it is important that you only use Gamsel as your medium. Gamsel is an odorless mineral spirit that can be used as a solvent for oil painting. Gamsel contains only 0.005% turpentine, so it's the safest type of solvent to use for oil painting. We have been using it to clean our brushes, but today we'll be using it as a medium to add fluidity to our paint. The reason we are starting with Gamsel today is to ensure our painting is archival, or able to stand up to the test of time. In order for oil paintings to be archival, we must follow the principle of fat over lean. This principle means that we must begin our painting with the least amount of oil possible. The gamsel thins out the paint without adding more oil. As we add more layers to the painting, we must consistently add more oil to the paint. If we do not, over time the painting will dry inconsistently and crack. One of the most famous examples of this phenomenon is the Mona Lisa. 
Da Vinci was one of the first artists to exploit oil paint's capabilities and was unaware of the effects of time. Now that we have mixed our palette, you may now begin filling in your underpainting. I will be demonstrating the grisaille technique with a still life painting. It's important to remember to use a variety of brushes as you work, always having a large selection on hand. I am constantly referring to the still life to gauge my range of values, mixing paints as needed. I am now going to speed up the footage so you can see the progression of the piece as I work. As you can see, I am starting with the background working towards the foreground of the painting. One important thing to note when working with oil paints, it is okay to work with the principle of general to specific in mind. You want to make sure you render all major shifts in value as you work, but try to ignore the minor details. You will get to those in the subsequent layers of the painting. Now that we have completed the underpainting, it is important that you let it fully dry before we begin the next layer. This can take anywhere from one day to one week. Because we added Gamsel to our paint before we began, hopefully the painting will be dry within the next 24 hours to work with. After our painting is dry, we may begin the next step in our painting, which is adding layers of paint or glazes. A glaze is a thin, transparent layer of paint used to build up depth and modify colors in a painting. We will be using glazes to add color to our still life. Make sure, before we start, that you have cleaned your palette from our last session. You want to start off with pure colors, not allowing the gray to mix with any of your paints. You may now begin mixing your palette with color from the still life. You may have already noticed, I do not have black or gray on my palette. You do not want to mix black with any of your colors because it will cause the color to deaden and look more muddy. Instead, change the intensity of your colors by adding blue, brown, or the colors complement. You may remember from our earlier discussion of fat over lean that it's important that we add more oil to our paint as we add subsequent layers. We will be adding refined linseed oil in this layer to add fluidity to our paint and ensure that our technique is archival. Now that we have mixed our palette, we can begin the glazing process. Once again, I will work from the background to the foreground in order to create cleaner edges. There are two techniques you may use to blend the subsequent layers as you work. One technique is to use a dry cloth to blend color and remove excessive paint. Another technique is to use a dry brush to blend the layers of paint, remove brush strokes, and remove excessive paint. Once again, I will now speed up the footage so you can see my progress as I work. This layer of the painting is now complete. Once it is dry, I will begin a third layer of the painting, adding more details and refining edges. I will ensure that I'm adding more oil to my palette in order to follow the principle of fat over lean. 
In review, some questions you may respond to are, what is an underpainting? What is a glaze? What does the term grisaille mean? Why is it important to use fat over lean method? What are two techniques you can use when glazing? In closing, this project would take a beginning painting class approximately three class periods to complete. These are some examples of student work made from Grisaille Still Life projects. Once again, thank you for your time and consideration.